Hello, greetings. Uh, this is me again, Zahra Jawad. Have a slight uh, sore throat. Um, I have to talk about this. Uh, recently, it came to me, this uh, Sayyid who had come around 1999, 2000 or 2000, year 2000 in Karachi, uh, to help me. He begged me to help him. Oh, sorry. He, yeah, in a way uh, that uh, to take help, excuse me, to take his help. So later on we were discussing on hypo hip hypocrisy, how much is rampant in the Shias, if he knows anything or we can do anything about it. So he told me one incident in his Sayyid family, cousin. Uh, the woman he's married to now is also his cousin, female cousin. So he said that in the family, uh, there were many male cousins and uh, who liked uh, uh, this, uh, his wife now, his cousin who liked their cousin and wanted to marry her uh, because she was good looking or something like this. For them, she was good looking. So, you know, <coughs> uh, he told me about an incident where this Aliwala cousin of his, uh, he had, uh, she, uh, uh, Farah had gone to, he used to call Farah Chanda, Farah had gone to their house, uh, this other male cousin, also a Sayyid Shia, a lawyer. So uh, what he did was first, uh, I was told that he was uh, walking back and forth in that uh, gully inside, uh, you know, just in the house, gully, side, something like this, the lane inside the house. So then what he did was he went, she was asleep. So he went and he molested her in the sense that he, you know, uh, touched her hair uh, in the front, right? Just uh, something like touched her hair, put her, uh, his hand over her hair like that and uh, she woke up or something and then he left so she complained against him <coughs> to Yusuf Zaidi the other cousin and uh, this one told me that he liked her from childhood uh, she had come to his birthday or something or he had gone to her birthday and he was sitting on the table and uh, he, he said that uh, he wanted to marry her in his childhood. This thought came to him. So since then, he's uh, been after her. Uh, he, you know, loves her and he wanted to marry her. But she somehow, I, I don't remember this very clearly, uh, but that either she liked someone else or she liked uh, this cousin who now had molested her coming in the bedroom where she was asleep and putting his uh, fingers through her hair or her his hand on her uh, hair what uh, uh, that either she was to marry this cousin or another person she liked I'm not sure. I don't know why, but uh, this time it came that uh, this cousin, uh, you know, so he was a Aliwala. He was uh, like a very, uh, this thing about Imam Ali and speak uh, always like, Ya Ali, Ali, about Ali. Now Yusuf Zaidi told me himself that 
this guy, uh, no, that he himself was a, <coughs> you know, Fatima Zahra, uh, Prophet Muhammad's daughter was his mother. So he was coming and he uh, took me into his confidence like that very much and wanting to help me. So I thought, oh my God, he must be a darvish or something. I read uh, through a site website that there are many walis, uh, friends of Allah in Pakistan and all this. So I was like, oh, I found her and I was reading Najul Balagha, Imam Ali's, <coughs> in the sayings, it's not in the sermons or the letters, that, oh, Kumail, he tells Kumail, how I would love to meet them. So in London also, I was like, I'd love to meet a good person, a good person, God, please send me a good person. <coughs> so, excuse me. Um, uh, this time, it came to me, uh, they were telling me, but I tried to avoid, but they would stop me like this, right? So I was like, I don't trust you. So then uh, they made me contemplate and uh, in retrospect about my life too. If you have loved someone, like, who would you uh, want uh, them for yourself or if you truly love someone? Like, uh, I know like in boy and girl, it's a natural thing that you want to have a physical closeness and spend the rest of your life, have family with them, share and have a family. This is very normal, right? But since uh, Yusuf said, he told me that many cousins in the, fa in the family, males liked her. The males liked her and wanted, you know, were trying to marry her or something like that. Uh, or wish that she was interested in them. But uh, so this cousin, however, also liked her. Now, I don't know whether this Farah liked him back or not, but she was not interested in Yusuf Zaidi at that time. <coughs> so or she liked someone else, or she liked this cousin who then molested her. So they're telling me it was a setup actually. Maybe this cousin, I don't know what is the reason behind his molestation like that. He could have simply gone, like, was he saying, Nade Ali, Nade Ali? <laughs> you know, God, please, I'm getting this feeling that I should molest my cousin. So he was up and down, going up and down, for, back and forth, walking. <coughs> Excuse me. So I don't know why, but uh, I don't know the reason behind it. And I don't remember fully or exactly what Yusuf Zaidi told me, whether the cousin was. Sorry, I'm a bit slow and repeating like this. Uh, the cousin, actually, they, these two were supposed to get married and then what happened is uh, it uh, he molested her so she you know started to uh, completely changed her mind no and uh, so things like that happen in life you know when you love someone and like for, for example in my life I had this something dream or something and then I went in college and I was walking back and forth upstairs on the second floor giving myself a fine lecture that I should leave college uh, but uh, then when I went downstairs a miracle uh, it just coincidentally uh, the dream uh, uh, Mrs. Manira Gulzar, my principal of St. Joseph's College, it was about her. Uh, so uh, she said something 
uh, which went completely against the dream that I had. So that's why I didn't leave college. Although what, even the lecture that I was giving myself, I felt that it was going above my head. And I was walking back and forth and, please leave, please leave this college. But uh, at the end, uh, the, uh, you know, in the end, when uh, they were leaving, the principal and I, <coughs> so I was seeing them off uh, <coughs> every day, actually. So she said something which uh, totally contradicted the dream and put my mind and heart at rest. And thus I then went on with what she said. It was, and even that word she spoke, like it hit the dream. And, you know, like they say, when falsehood comes, it, no, when truth comes, it hurls at fal falsehood and breaks its neck. In the Quran ayat, uh, in the Quran there's ayat. So I've been contemplating on this and it is something uh, quite deep for me about love. <coughs> you see, when you love someone and you want someone's good, then you definitely want the other person's good. Uh, uh, the girl and boy marriage thing and having a family, I understand that is uh, normal, but uh, this is like supra normal true love you know this is uh, like uh, the heart of that person they're telling me that uh, this cousin who uh, Yusuf said you know thought that uh, it, he was just oh yeah I have to complete something else Yusuf said he so said that he was such a hypocrite you know saying Ali 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 all the time praising Ali Imam Ali and he did this. So Yusuf Zaidi thought of, uh, contemplated on this. What shall I do? What shall I do? Uh, uh, what What is the right thing to do? What is the best thing to do? Like what action shall I take against him? Since he's uh, molested the cousin and he shouldn't have. So then he decided, like he knew this is violent, but uh, that he's also been violent in this way. He will be violent by giving him one punch. So he went into the chamber room of this cousin since he, remember he's a lawyer, and uh, he gave him a punch. And then the, uh, I don't remember anything, uh, that the cousin ever punched him back or said anything to him. He was just quiet or something. I don't remember that clearly, but I think uh, Yusuf said he just punched him. And uh, the cousin uh, didn't uh, quite say anything. So maybe it was a sudden punch and Yusuf said he thought, you know, he, he didn't have time to protect his face or wherever the punch was coming from to hit him, uh, to punch him. This is my English. So, now, yes, yeah, so recently I also contemplated, like, why am I being like this, right, uh, against Yusuf Zaidi. I also, like, started to doubt whether he was a true Shia, he was a hypocrite. We went to London, there was a bomb blast. I started to really panic, uh, you know. And he later on, he also messed up my, uh, he told me, no, you should not go. Yes, uh, I'll pray for you that you shouldn't go to Mrs. Manira Gulzar. But I wanted it to happen in a graceful manner, you know, mutual, I should. But it uh, it made me so sick and uh, voices start to come and watching feeling. 
And then, of course, I couldn't go and I didn't want to go in my weakness. And, you know, I thought I had faith that, oh, this is something special is happening for the whole world. This will be special. <clears throat> so I didn't get to leave her gracefully. It was terrible. It was extremely painful. The moment I would want to get my mind I felt that now she was living inside of me under my skin. Reading everything I was reading, it became so exaggerated. Um, uh, the, and it went on and until now, even if I say something, you know, I see, I've see i seen some negative things about her, still it hurts me. Like, uh, And when I wanted to take my mind off her, uh, I would feel like my mind is meshed. Yeah. or it's become mincemeat, it's too much energy. Uh, so I felt that this is not right. Still I used to then get angry at Yusuf Zaidi, but feel pity for him. No, 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 how can I? He's, he's told me he's Fatima Zahra's son and all this. So the thing I found out recently was that Fatima Zahra's son uh, had uh, not that much insight, not proper correct insight into the matter why the Aliwala, Fatima Zahra's husband, husband's uh, uh, divana uh, lover, uh, what do you call it? Uh, was, uh, you know, it, there was a, a deep reason, there was some reason behind it, and that he set this all up, uh, this whole thing up, uh, to, uh, you know, make Chanda Farah, Yusuf now, uh, Yusuf's wife, to get over him. And that can happen, I've seen it in my life. Uh, and then, you know, you leave it on God because, you know, and then, you know, like Rumi has said, how sweet is selflessness. So, his poem, How Sweet is Selflessness. Yes, and another thing is that sometimes, you know, I would have this deluded feelings in that, uh, not illusion, but delusions. Uh, that Yusuf Zaidi, if he's saying something, he knows Mrs. Manira Gulzar, and he's uh, giving me indirect messages. Uh, you know, what uh, the communicating what they want to communicate to me. So once he came to my place, and he started to talk about how his cousin, the same Farah, his wife now, he later married and went to London with, uh, bef before going uh, with her, he went first and all this. He uh, started to tell me that uh, there was this girl who uh, uh, somehow they started to speak on the phone. Uh, they became, but she was younger, the girl was younger. And uh, so Farah, his cousin started to get fed up uh, by the phone calls and all this. And she started to complain to Yusuf Zaidi. So I felt like this was so terrible. This is quite unethical and nasty of someone to do that. You should not be two faced. Always uh, like, you know, someone. If you don't like, uh, if you say that, please now don't call me, I'm busy or something like this but they don't have that integrity to do that. Uh, you know, you should put the person in their place from the very beginning. If uh, this is how rude, uh, like, you know, you want to be. Uh, this is a rude way of saying it, uh, but uh, you should always be honest. And if the person is bothering you, then tell them. We don't know how to communicate in a 
productive, uh, mutual, level-headed, honest way. <clears throat> you know, some of us just keep it in the heart. If the boss is being rude, uh, so, for example, like a, a friend of mine was telling me that my boss was being rude to me or something. We were not getting along. I had to go and have a talk with him. A civilized manner that uh, is something wrong. Or why? I feel that, you know, you don't like me or uh, something. <coughs> Have I done something wrong? So I found that really honest and really great of her to go up to the boss and speak to him like this. Also, when a girl was jealous of me for something in St. Michael's school, when I was in St. Michael's school, uh, she came up and told me, like, uh, you know, you, uh, you're doing this and it makes me jealous. <coughs> so please don't do this. So I, I thought this, uh, her honesty, I really admired her honesty and her courage to come up to me and say that, you know, I'm feeling jealous. Uh, and another thing, and then when I watched the Dil To Pagale movie, in that also Karishma Kapoor, she says that, Deko, I'm bad, I'm and it's hurting me, and I'm bad, right? And so Shah Rukh Khan said, no, no, you are not bad, Rahul was his name in that movie, Dil To Pagal. Karishma Kapoor's uh, name I forget in the movie. <coughs> so uh, this, I was like, oh my God, uh, I had come across this in my life, real life incident. And how courageous, I really admire such people. To be honest about it. And you know, uh, such honesty, and how to, there's a way of telling someone or how to talk about it. And if you have a big, good heart, then you would somehow uh, communicate that uh, so well. And uh, you would uh, confess. So I really like the Christians going to the priest confessing. That maybe due to that, you know, some of them are very upright and they're very outright like about their feelings and all this. If they do something bad, they say, yes, we're, it's bad, but we're doing it. Instead of, you know, hiding your own bad, but talking about other people's bad or not even liking that other person. You see, when we do it, it's uh, we. another thing is that Something we do, uh, we accept that we, it doesn't look bad on us. But when the other person does the same thing, it looks bad. Uh, so this is another thing we have. Somehow it's crept into human beings as their second nature or something. Uh, quick And also quick to judge others. Slow to judge ourselves, you know, as they say. Um, so, this, uh, since yesterday, I'm like, no, no, I don't believe you about that. So they stop, stop me like this, like they're stopping me now. And uh, so, sorry, Fatima Zahra's son, whether he was a true person or he was greedy, bribed to go to London, or he thought he's doing a great work, you know, helping me, but he separated me from my principal. He contributed to this. So I found a ayat in the Quran that those God wants to join and they uh, separate are the mischief makers, right? Uh, there's this ayat in Surah Baqarah I found. Okay, I found this verse, but it's uh, from 1 to 286, but 
outside Google search. I haven't gone. When I go inside, it gives me from verse 1. Uh, so here it is, Surah Baqarah. Those who break the covenant of Allah after ratifying it and sever uh, that which Allah ordered to be joined and to make mischief in the earth, those are they, dot, dot, dot. Maybe it's Alameen or uh, they are the disbelievers. So I can't find the Quran ayat, but it's coming. Mischief makers are they. And my translation was something like, if I remember a long time ago, uh, something like those, uh, something like this, but in the end, they are the mischief makers. Um, and those are they, I don't know what it says here anyways. What I can say is that I was getting signs that it's not right. Uh, I was getting signs from God or another, that another way that, um, you know, you should, uh, like from butterflies, from nature, that I should go to Mrs. Manira Gulzar. But I was waiting for more signs. And years went by, and she even wasn't calling. So in the madness, I was becoming even more resentful. And the rancor in my heart was increasing to the point where I started to curse her, you know, really, like, uh, and abuse and all this. Uh, This is the thing. Anything else I'm missing? Uh, so, I don't know. And also, uh, maybe I haven't said this properly, that Yusuf Zaidi could have thought that, you know, he is uh, the son of Fatima Zahra and uh, did the wrong thing, misguided me or even harmed me. Uh, so, and you know, the voices of Fatima Zahra <coughs> started to come and she also started to uh, curse uh, Mrs. Manira Gozar on Thursday nights. This would happen. And then I started to pick up the Quran and madness. There was a time I would not even uh, uh, put swear on the Quran, let alone touch it. You know, I, I had told myself that even if there's a case on me, I will not uh, swear, put my, like the, they show in the movies that in court, in, you know, Muslim countries, some of them, they have to, uh, taking an oath, they have to put their hand on the Quran and say that message bol raun, such ke lava. Or so even though I'm innocent in the case, I would tell them I won't put my hand on the Quran. <coughs> so I cannot take that this oath. Maybe they'll, God knows what they'll have to do with me. But uh, this is what I had thought. May God make me strong enough. Uh, so this and. Uh, and also, like, uh, not to listen to someone, even if they say they are from Fatima Zahra. You see the uh, misguidance game, uh, uh, the hurt, the pain, excruciating. I, I was thinking that, you know, when you go and you pray with, for someone, uh, that gracefully it can happen instead of, like, this terrible killing worse than death energy. I mean, of course, I mean, all the time, like being at the edge and, uh, you know, when they say it hurts when you die or something like this, when you're dying. No, it hurts while, you know, if, uh, for, for some people when the uh, breath is going and when you're dying, it hurts a lot or something like this. So I was always in that, I felt like, my God, what, I'm so shocked. And Yusuf Zaidi's negligence, 
and I felt it was all disor like he wasn't answerable he quickly then in a few years <laughs> started to take off and when I wanted to go and find his father to complain and I wanted to see his mother talk to his mother what is this <clears throat> and to find out about his family background are they true Muslim Sayyids or Shia Sayyids or you know uh, what is this uh, because I saw him wearing white shirt and black pants which is of uh, the Sipai Saiba color Anyways, uh, he, his mother had come on the MSN messenger once, like she was saying, as you wish, and this and that. But my mother uh, took out my f fall divination and told me that you will even go to London to do the bar. And her, her fall would never be untrue. So, and so, you know, like telling them like that. And uh, Yusuf said his mother was quite, like, as you wish. Like, you know, as if I'm stubborn and I want my wish to come true. So anyway, so uh, never to listen to one side and trust these Sayyids, Shia Sayyids in Pakistan who come in the name of Fatima Zahra. Then he even sent me a message after going to London. He sent me a text message. I said, no, you need to be accountable here. Uh, you need to be here. And, uh, you know, my case, he's messed up. He's gone to London. What kind of a healer is he? <coughs> and also uh, saying that he's Fatima Zahra's son. He needs to be accountable for this. Uh, no, he didn't take money, uh, but I also gave him free contract law, commercial law, contract, no, contract law, tuitions. I didn't charge him any money. <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> but this is someone's life, someone's health. <clears throat> Either, you know, uh, let's uh, do something, find out, uh, open my father to call someone. Like we should, should we complain, FIR, uh, open a, you know, police case. Complain to the police. What shall we do? And uh, I then thought that this was really bad. A psychiatrist needs to come. And you need to have Bibi Fat if you are seeing you you are Bibi Fatma Tazaras. Mm. And what organization like here we have in Dubai an Aqaf uh, where you uh, the office of the Shias, Kojaishna Sharia thing, also is here. And uh, so we can go there. So we can get, you know, uh, like later on later on I was thinking like, no, this is not right. We should get um uh, uh, the organ go to an uh, Shia Aqaf and uh, you know say that he's healing me and this and that please don't take these things uh, lightly and trust uh, these Shias like that and also uh, when you're doing majlises if you have an Imam Barga make sure that uh, this person is a qualified uh, uh, Zakir from Qom or uh, Najaf, you know, like that. Uh, so please be very careful. L lives have been toyed with, and then he's gone uh, for, uh, he was like complaining. Uh, he joined a newspaper company firm, and then he complained that he wasn't getting much pay, and uh, then he went to London uh, leaving me in the lurch with this uncle of his, his name was Adik, uh, and uh, they really messed up. And the uncle was saying, like, go to this uh, other Sunni man, and he, uh, and also, like, the other things 
that he's done, like bringing Sikandar Shah and Arbab Shah, that day it really, really hurt me when uh, they came and Sikandar Shah took my date of birth and they never said anything about it to me. Right, later on Yusuf Zaidi never said anything about it. Sikandar Shah, he said that these people have the ability, the knowledge uh, to take any spirit or anything harming you here. Uh, so Yusuf Zaidi had brought him and this is how they took me in the confidence. And uh, uh, Sikandar Shah said that, uh, you know, it's, for some it's mental illness, uh, but I detect that for you it wasn't mental illness. It's uh, definitely a spirit. Some spirit has gotten attached to you. So did you feel anything when I... So I said, yes, I felt a lot of pain and all this. Then again, the attacks were coming on me and I was feeling excruciating pain while asleep, not awake. And I would get up in a shock. And this started, uh, this started when Sikandar Shah told me that he had removed this. Uh, and I said, who, what, who was the spirit? So he said that uh, this, uh, what do you want to call it? Muslim, Muslim lady spirit was attached to you. That's why you were feeling all this chronic fatigue that I was feeling and I couldn't work. And you know, down and low in everything, energy and get very, get depressed very quickly. And so this, he had brought in year 2000, he had done. And from there, the pain in the body while being, uh, you know, while sleeping, started and it carried on carried on carried on it disturbed me sometimes i'd go to sleep after a minute get up and this current a lot of bad energy uh current you know currents going through me and once i was like sitting and sleeping i tried to sleep and uh, like my teeth were all you know tied together like I felt they were going to kill me <laughs> and from the window like uh, you know someone is watching me in the in Karachi <clears throat> so someone is chuckling laughing uh, has a smirky smile on their face right now uh, a vision it's like a vision I can perceive it uh, through my third eye so uh, uh, they were attacking me and scary feeling like put, kept me in fear. One, two, three, you count till 10. We are going to burn you. After I read about the distance mind control, like, you know, through the oven or some uh, energy that you can even send heat at, uh, you know, and the person can feel like the person's uh, skin is burning or, and all this heat, heat in my, on, like uh, on my head and um, it's like hot. It goes really, really hot and uh, even my skin, some areas, it started and started from tears. Like I felt this is, you know, like how tears are dripping down your cheek, from your eyes, on your face. <laughs> so that's why I don't say water dripping down. Tears on my feet. And someone had made an Ansu, Urdu name for tears is Ansu, on Yahoo group or some chat group or something. And website also. And... Uh, much uh, toll did you take, uh, men and jinn. Suryana Maya did So like that, uh, Yusuf Zaidi, I don't know who, devils, not uh, Fatima Zahra's, I mean claiming to be Fatima Zahra's son, 
But God knows that she really messed up. Fatima Zahra. Now we can see through the case I am showing you for the case and how Muhammad was a false prophet and they were after Fadak. So greedy, a zalim, cruel progeny of Prophet Muhammad. And so many things like that start to happen. Uh, so he thought like he's Fatima Zahra's son and he's being told, you know, he knows how he has that spiritual knowledge. Although he told me he didn't, he lacked the knowledge to remove uh, the spirit. That's why he brought Sikandar Shah, who was from Abdul Qadir Jilani, Muslim, who believe in Abdul Qadir Jilani as a saint. Arbab Shah's uh, elder, older brother, or eldest brother. So that was a long time ago. And uh, so the pain also started, attacks started. Uh, I said, I'm going to Dubai, will they, uh, will I be attacked, will she come and... So he, he said, no, only three times it can happen, but it kept happening. In Dubai also I came, he made me drink some water and, you know, gave me, did he give me a black thread or something or my, for my protect? No, he just gave me some water to drink. And he gave me some herb, uh, this herbal something for my health. Uh, so then it didn't work. And uh, I don't know. But uh, uh, so I don't know. Yeah, so. This, okay, fragile time, uh, he told me, so about back to that time, and he came to my house and he told me that Chanda was very, uh, Farah uh, was, uh, you know, fed up of this girl who used to call her younger girl uh, a lot, and or some, uh, you know, every time every day or something like this. Uh, so she would, uh, she was like, the girl is bothering me and all this. I thought, I also thought that maybe, you know, principal have sent him to tell me indirectly, like you're bothering us. Don't come to our house, don't call us. Like that also. <coughs> so, I, it was very, like, painful for me. Very like uh, they were, you know, sending me this. Okay, and uh, yeah, they, uh, so something like, uh, yeah, the lady in London did tell me, so I was like on, on jihad against this witches, evil powers against us. I was on a jihad mode in London. Also, uh, I've tried everything. Uh, so the maddening attack. So um, anything else? Yeah. So more on this. Uh, I can't be, even if he was sent by someone who wanted to help me, and there was found out that there was a witch and we need help but then he's messed it up his Fatima Zahra has uh, messed it up his prayers backfired the witch started to attack more and came telling me that she's uh, no the devil the witch sends the spirit spirits uh, started to tell me that she's Fatima Zahra I was told no devil can come to say that you know, she's Fatima Zahra. But then later on, I was told, no, no, this is not right. And uh, anyways, even if they tried to with their prayers, he said, I, I did my, I prayed for you and all this. And there's another thing, like sometimes he would, in a friendly manner, 
call me like mad so i say what why are you calling me mad uh, so very uh, like you know their intellect uh, they're very uh, this thing in uh, you see then they'll point out like you know i didn't mean to demean you or put you down the reason why i called you mad is because scroll up or you know they would give certain <coughs> reason and very like sensible and wise and calm collected uh, uh very controlled uh, kind of a thing sensible way ah it's uh, like uh, reminds me of the shia way of uh, reasoning and they have very high intellectual reasoning and uh, so he could get himself off through this by explaining and all that very intellectual calm person uh, never loses his cool Ooh, hardly but uh, something like from london he would send a message text message i think your health is increased uh, your um, health is decreasing and uh, become worsening sorry uh, your health is worsening and you should go and see a psychiatrist uh, so this time he was like this so i think uh, he may have tried his best but failed however uh, there's a deeper thing now coming out that uh, prophet muhammad i can see is a i can see is a false prophet through the text that i've uh, been you know reading uh, the book uh, the quran uh, the some of the sayings of uh, imam jafar sadiq the imams in al kafi and allama majlisi's book so especially the quran ayats and things like that i saw a very uh, deadly tyrant terrible man muhammad uh and uh, so what the point of saying all this was i have forgot uh so you know there's a deeper like i i i got start when i came to dubai i started to get signs that i'm srimati and i did some um uh, research on who srimati then i found out srimati is uh, radha rani radha and then later on more signs coming and then it all made sense i knew shri krishna and all this so <coughs> in this life shri krishna is here not here where i am but now in this world yeah and uh, tall dark and handsome and all this so uh what happened is uh, that uh, the hindu side of mine uh, i don't agree with because there's very little evidence but uh, and so they're telling me that uh, i said i don't agree with you people what you're telling me about Yusuf said his other cousin that it was he pretended to molest it was a set up from uh, by him for some reason that i'm not sure of and then i'm going to uh, they haven't told me and neither will they tell me because i won't believe them anyways or maybe later on they'll tell me uh, through some other sign but for now this much is enough for me to think contemplate on you see i would have uh, uh, i didn't know this 
some depth in this about um, principle. Like Yusuf Zaidi, they don't believe in reincarnation, Shias. They, uh, they believe in Rajal, Rajal which I've read in uh, its a, a lesser resurrection, when Imam Mahdi will come. So how will the bodies, like they think the bodies will come out of the Greek as the same face? It has to be a transmigration of the soul. But no, the Shias don't believe that. Shias believe that Imam Mahdi will resurrect like uh, Jesus Christ did. Uh, one of the oh, Laz Lazarus, right? Resurrected him from the dead and the grave. So this is what Imam Mahdi will do. Another thing is that Yusuf Zaidi about so reincarnation, uh, they fail to look at this and uh, they fail to do justice to my relationship with Mrs. Munira Gulzar by taking the authoritative thing of saying, okay, I'm going to uh, pray and for you and discouraging me from going there because they don't know who I, they didn't know who I was, neither did I know who I was. So, and then, uh, so they did an injustice. Although from Shabazz Kalandar, a dream came that if you don't believe in reincarnation, it is there. It will be a great loss for you people. Nuksan <coughs> hoga. Uh, so I started to do research, and Yusuf Zaidi started to discourage me. Sent me an ayat from the Quran. The ayat is <laughs> that uh, you know about the kafir that a uh, God. They say. When they look at the punishment, and yeah, they now are sure that uh, this is Allah and the hereafter, Judgment Day or something. <coughs> Excuse me. Judgment Day. They say, oh Allah, let us go back, we will do some good. Then God tells them, no, never, because you were given so many chances to do good and, you know, search the truth and all this stuff, for example. I'm just explaining. Away the verse, never you were kafirs and dis as uh, cruel people. Let us go back into the world and do some good. Um, you know, so we were misguided, and so no, 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 no excuse now. So this Yusuf Zaidi sent me in the email showing me that this verse. And he said he's going to send me a, a saying from Imam, some Imam, that there's no reincarnation. But he sent me, uh, he didn't send me that, but he sent me uh, an ayat from the Quran. And I said, no, no, this is for the kafirans. Look, like here, here they uh, falter in reasoning uh, properly. Like uh, some in, now that I've shown in some Quran ayats, uh, they falter in seeing the proper translation and what is missing. So the Shias, when they, you know, about certain things, they're very intellectual, uh, they're very eloquent. Uh, Imam Ali has peak of eloquence. The, the, it, uh, very dignified with, with wise people. And this young man, he was 19 years old, Yusuf Zaidi. And he turned 21, I think, like that. Um, so here I had to point it out to him that, look, it uh, is uh, these kafirun who have done a lot of uh, zulm or, you know, not believed in God and been in, indulging in whatever the definition is of kafirun, indulging in worldly pleasures and uh, missing out on the truth seeking and all this and you know some of them like mocking believers that you are stupid fools blindly following something you have no evidence such stupid stupidity we don't follow you are following superstitions things like that arrogant
people ignorant but don't know uh, do not accept that they are ignorant so like uh, that and I will miss the point is that I had to prove show him that this is for the kafir and there are other ayats in the Quran which say that uh, God has given two lives and uh, you know like iron you may be so rajal is there resurrection is there uh, and then kashif al uh the shia ulama's book a religious scholar of high caliber uh, explains uh, rajal resurrection the lesser re resurrection when imam Mahdi will come but he says no 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 it is impossible and then there it about transmigration sorry yeah, about transmigration, reincarnation. He says it's impossible for a soul uh, to have another body and be born, uh, the bo you know, come here in the body again, transmigrate uh, like that. It's impossible, but uh, not for the rajal, like the bodies from the graves will rise when Imam Mahdi comes. So for that it's not impossible because in the Quran, Surah Baqarah, he also talks about a war that took place and some Bani Israel, the uh, Jew, the children of Israel, uh, they ran away or uh, against them, some, some of them, the opponents ran away and uh, they were then brought back to life. Uh, in the that was resurrection right like jesus's resurrection or uh, huh so this he says is possible nothing is impossible for god can anything be impossible for god but then on the other hand he says the reason for because the law of God is against transmigration of the soul, meaning reincarnation. However, nothing is impossible for God. Is any is there anything like they ask questions like this? Is there anything impossible for God? Nothing is impossible for God. <coughs> so, but then this is impossible. This is not possible for the soul to transmigrate but that is not because it's not impossible for God to do this so the logic was not uh, uh, making sense to me his reasoning uh, didn't make sense to me that if nothing is impossible for God why wouldn't God why can't God make it possible for the soul even to transmigrate and to have another life here. However, there are verses in the Quran, but the Shias, 12 Shias, explain it away that even if you were iron, we would, uh, that's, uh, so they say this is not a reincarnation. Even if, I'm just searching this uh, verse. Okay, I found this one. It's not like even if you were iron, but, any or any hard substance you can imagine or there is here <coughs> Surah Qiyamah verse 3 does man think that we will not assemble his bones uh, uh, verse 4 now reading yes we are able to able even to proportion his fingertips but man desires to continue in sin. He asks, when is the day of resurrection? So, you know, uh, this ayat only I could find. I'm now very tired. <coughs> so, um, I'll take a break now. My throat is also very dry, hurting, kind of. <coughs> so, this is about resurrection. The bones can be reassembled or assembled and the fingertips can be proportioned back but 
uh, the, the Quran doesn't talk about the soul uh, being transmigrated, you see. So even the Shias don't believe in this. I'm told some sects do believe in reincarnation, uh, subsects of Shias, right? But uh, twelve Shias don't believe in reincarnation. Okay, I will talk about this in length in another video. Let's see how long I can. I have to take a break and then I will come back later. Thank you very much.